I think we sort of approach this as a way to sort of tell these really important stories using non-traditional means. So we're, you know, historically we're a film and TV company, but we look at these immersive media as a way to kind of tell the story from a, from a, a different perspective. Uh, create active storytelling. So basically put, you know, give the audiences agency so, to the point that they feel like they're part of the experience. And we hope that the, the messages that, we, that we're trying to tell around ocean conservation therefore resonates much longer after, the, after they've taken the headset off. So it's called Invisible Ocean. So we're exploring parts of the ocean that you can't see with the naked eye. And when we were sort of exploring it and, and sort of putting everything together, we sort of felt that audiences had what I've sort of called a shore deep relationship, they understand the beach, they understand the megafauna that are out there, they understand maybe a few miles out, but they, when you start sort of getting into like the really woolly subjects like marine photosynthesis, where the majority of our oxygen comes from, and how our, our sound is impacting many species and their ability to survive, it gets really sort of foggy. Whereas this, this sort of form of storytelling, immersive storytelling, suddenly allows us to connect with audiences in, in ways that perhaps film and TV tr typically can't. We want people to sort of feel like they're together and they're part of a sort of connected movement. We want them, as they come out of the experience, to be asking questions of each other and talking, telling everyone their favourite parts. And then hopefully that allows that message to resonate with them in, in a few weeks' time or they can sort of pick up on little things that they've shared together. That, for me, is the massive difference, perhaps, with this latest evolution of these uh, immersive experiences, where now we're doing them together. We're seeing each other in the experiences, so we're not sort of isolated. We're doing these as, as families and friends, and hopefully then this sort of wider message will be part of our life you know, going forward. We want to connect with audiences of all different ages. So we've got these experiences that, as you say, target a huge range of those that are young and young at heart. And for audiences that are perhaps a little bit too young to put one of these devices on their heads, there's lots of other ways that they can sort of interact. And I guess you, back to fun, this is sort of what we want to do. We want to sort of take these big messages, make them fun, make them interactive. And so throughout the, uh, throughout the centre, there's an AR trail. So that's a case of using your phone, finding these amazing pictures that have been developed of larval forms of this species. Uh, using your phone to sort of discover what they look like when they grow up. So we have kids looking at fish larvae and octopus larvae and then suddenly they use the phone they see a giant version on their phone of what, what it'll look like when it grows up. And they're dotted throughout the centre and through other parts of Cardiff Bay. And then over in the main sort of area in Glanver we have what's called Wave Maker and that's really targeted at young audiences. It's purely interactive, it's purely just for fun, but it's a way to sort of connect with bioluminescence with plankton and uh, for diatoms, which are microscopic algae, in a fun kind of interactive way. We've taken this to, to museums internationally. What's exciting about this is the first time we've been able to bring everything together and launch it in the UK. So it's it's just been a real joy. The reactions we've had from people for the last, like uh, uh, across the weekend, have just been mind blowing. And we're really excited to be here through summer, where audiences of all ages can come and connect with it with our ocean.